Putin challenged Joe Biden to a debate. Oh, I don't know if I trust Biden on that one. I highly doubt they'd do that. I actually would have. I think seeing Hillary Clinton do that would have been fucking insane. I don't know if I trust Joe Biden though. I don't know. I don't know if he could do it, man. I think he's smart enough, but I think he would stumble too much. I think it would look bad. My man's got a stutter. Yeah. Putin will never do it. He has nothing to gain from it. What do you mean? Putin literally was one that issued the challenge. What in the f*** would they debate about? Um, I think Biden's recent comments calling Putin a killer. Well. Well what? What's there What's there to debate about? What do you mean, Putin? Careful. You heard me? <clears throat> if it was a purely policy slash history or something, I think Hillary would annihilate you. Well, I, I think Hillary, or, I, Hillary is smart enough, I think, to know everything that's happened to have a good conversation. I think Biden is too. I just don't know if I would trust Biden to like verbally navigate that conversation without looking like he's lost. That's the only thing I wonder. Because like obviously this would all be this would just be a pure optics debate. Um, yeah, whoever sounded better. Da -da -da. Yeah, because I mean like obviously both countries have done bad things, right? Yep. This oh, is the yeah. whitest this is the whitest thing I've ever read in my entire life. Here we go. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden says his tax hikes would only affect the wealthy, defining that as those who make more than 500 or I'm sorry, 400,000 a year. But according to a financial planning analysis, families making 400,000 a year aren't exactly living large, especially in major cities. A family of four with 400,000 a year in income is more likely to drive a Toyota and take staycations than drive a Lambo and fly first class. What is this from? 400,000 a year, would that not put you in like the top 1% of earners in the uh, US? I think it, I think it actually, I think top 1% is like 350, well, hold on. Top 1% yeah. income US. Oh, top 1% is 540K. So it probably puts you at like the top 2%. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's gotta be, it's gotta be a meme article. Isn't this for four people though? Even for four people, it should be easily yeah. doable. This is something that came up in the election cycle last time in the UK. I think there's a massive disconnect between the people who are near the top of the earning bracket and what they perceive as rich. Mm -hmm. So there's like this guy, like Labour's policy at the time was that they would only increase taxes on the top 5% of earners. Mm -hmm. Ooh, 5%. And this guy was on, yeah. And this guy on question time was basically saying that Labour was gonna put up his taxes, but he's not actually in the top 5% of earners. So the guy's lying. And he was like, well, if you're not in the top 5% of earners, your taxes won't go up. He's like, well, I will, because I've read your policy, and it says that if you earn more than £80,000, you're going to tax me. And, you know, every doctor in the country earns more than me. Every lawyer in the country earns more than me. And that's just, like, not true. But, you know, you've got people out here earning 80 grand, and they don't feel like they're that well off. When in reality, they've just got no idea how poor some people are. Yeah. And I think in the UK, I think it's, like, 250 pound, 250,000 quid a year, I think, puts you in the top 1%, I think, for UK Easily, earners. Yeah, I'd imagine it's less than that. That guy in your mention saying that about 400k is making me rich, he's just trying to, like, humble brag, I think. I don't know. I do. I think he's like, eh, it's not even that much money. Anyone no could No shot that. that that guy makes 400k a year. No shot. Because if he made 400k, then... Why is he like wasting his time on Twitter in Steven's replies? True. Should he be doing something more productive with his life. Yeah, I don't know. Like, if he really seat. makes that much money, shouldn't he be like in Hawaii or like? What? <laughs> I don't know. I suspect you know, if you did the statistics properly, I suspect that that medicine, independent of public health, kills more people than it saves. I suspect. Mm, okay. In fact, if you if you factor in phenomena like the development of superbugs in hospitals, for example, did the statistics properly? I suspect that that medicine, independent of public health, kills more people than it saves. I suspect if you if you factor in phenomena like the development of superbugs in hospitals, for example, that overall the net consequence of hospitals is negative. <laughs> wait, wait, what about, wait, what about like all the actual bugs that were just like mass killing people before like medicine and shit? 
What about like measles? What about like the bubonic plague or the Spanish flu or like Or what about like diabetes? With the absence of public medicine, he said, "What does public medicine mean? Is he just saying pu is he just saying public health so that he can say, well, all the good stuff counts as public health, and then every there's and then there, what is what counts as medicine versus public health? What does that even mean? Like, do vaccines ca not count as medicine because it's public health or now that's just a guess, and but it's and and it could easily be wrong, but it, it also <laughs> why does he make statements like this?" Why would you do something like I think that women are bad for society? <clears throat> now that's just a guess, and I could be wrong. But like why why say this? Not be wrong. And that is a good example or a good, that's where my thinking about what we don't know has taken me with regards to the critique of what we do. The fact that it's even plausible is a stunning well, you know, medical error is the third leading cause of death. Yep. You know, and that does In the world or in the U.S., or Doesn't take into account the generation of superbugs, for example. The generation of superbugs, or, you know, if you're thinking broadly about it, um, let's... I, I don't know where you stand on this issue, but I have been um, tracking the lab leak hypothesis for COVID, and it is very distressing to me that as much as it's an unsettled question, the evidence for the lab leak gets stronger over time. All of the competing hypotheses fall one by one and are replaced by some alternative that hasn't yet been falsified. But that's very ominous to me. And if this is the case, if this was a, a bug that was modified in the lab through gain of function research and escaped, then you have to add that to the balance sheet. Why does this, how, what, like, what, what, this is like, what's the meme? Like, what one SJW does to a motherfucker. Like, what the fuck? What happened? If we want to defeat capitalism, we are going to need a party that will organize working people to fight for the demands that we want and to win socialism. Thank you so much. Right, right uh, quick point of privilege, quick point um, of personal privilege. Yes. Um, guys, uh, first of all, James Jackson, Sacramento, he, him. I just want to say, can we please keep the chatter to a minimum? I'm one of the people who's very, very prone to sensory overload. There's a lot of whispering and chatter going on. It's making it very difficult for me to focus. Please, can we just, I know it's, we're all fresh and ready to go, but can we please just keep the chatter to a minimum? It's affecting my ability to focus. Thank you. Thank you, comrade. Okay, is there a speaker against name, point chapter, pronoun? Privilege. Point of personal privilege. Yes. Please do not use gendered language to, to address everyone. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sam Lewis. Uh, he, him. I'm from the New York City DSA chapter. Um, this very simple amendment is to strike the language about forming um, an independent party. Um, I want, in conversation with the authors of the proposal since, I think we're all um, in agreement that we do want to build a mass organization, political organization of the working class that vies for state power. So it's not uh, an attempt to um, get rid of that shared goal. Uh, the problem with the language as I see it is that it counterposes forming an independent working class party with the tactical use of the democratic line. So it's basically saying in the future we will break with um, our tactical use of the democratic line. I think many of us have an agnostic position on that question, right? We want to um, behave in the most strategic way as um, class politics in this country develops. We don't want to commit to what has historically been a failed strategy in the United States of forming a third party ballot line. So um, I consider this a, a friendly debate. Um, I will be voting sorry, for sorry, the sippy, sippy, uh, proposal sorry, sorry, whether sorry. or not this, um, this passes, uh, but I think it's important to discuss. Thank you. So 12. Right into a Jordan Peterson video, of course. Dude, alt writers are so good. Or like extremist people on the right are so smart and, and clever when it comes to like advertising their ideas. Like they will utilize whichever leaders are like unintentionally parroting white nationalist talking points. They'll astroturf like motherfuckers. Like 
they're, they're so good when it comes to it. And then people on the left will like, any successful strategy you suggest, it's like, it's not good enough, it's not good enough, it's not enough, it's not good enough. Like, okay, dude, like, Jesus. What is astroturfing? Um, it's, it's kind of a newer term because of the Elon Musk rocket stuff. It's it, basically, it's like, the idea is that like, you're bringing in like bad information from like a higher place. So it's called astroturfing because it's like you're turfing like outside of the atmosphere, kind of. Like you're like spewing misinformation from like a place of authority, kind of. Um, astroturfing is when you show up in a community and you pretend that you're just like a dewy-eyed outsider or you're like an authentic person in the community. And, but, and you, or no, no, not an outsider actually. You pretend you're a person in the community and then you could like kind of sort of unintentionally um, or through chance like bring up ideas that you're actually like trying to intentionally do via propaganda. So like for instance, let's say that there's like a community of people that talk about like their favorite sodas to drink and I get paid by Pepsi. I like, I go into the community and I'm like, man guys, I just found this new soda to drink. It's called Pepsi Cola. It's actually so good. You guys should try it. That would be like astroturfing, right? When people don't basically disclose like um, that they're being paid or like that they're coming from like an outside area to like spread a certain opinion. And instead they pretend that they're an authentic part of the community. What'd you talk about on the prime case thing? People were getting mad about whether or not, like, is it good for companies for woke capitalism? And people were like, well, I don't think they're authentic with their messaging. Like, I don't think they really mean it. It's like, who the fuck cares? Like, I'd rather have, like, some woke gay stuff rather than, like, people that are anti-gay or not giving any gay representation. Like, who the fuck cares? Everything capitalism does is performative. They're doing it for money. They're performing for, for profit. That's, what it, that's all it is. Is it even possible to know if it's real diversity? What's even the point of talking about that? Yeah, I don't know, there is no point. You just check it to see if the representation is good or not. If the representation is good, if it's not offensive or whatever, then that's fine. Who cares if they're doing it for money? And that's like my frustration is like people on the right will like, will latch on to anybody that unintentionally spreads a message. Like alt writers look at Trump and they see like an opportunity for some guy to unwittingly spread their message. Lefties look at Biden and they see like literal fucking Hitler incarnate. It's like unbelievable. It's how stupid they are. Although, to be fair, there has been a lot of infighting on the right recently. Kind of recently. So, although I think that probably came more with the Trump losing the election and all of that fuckery. Omaha mayoral candidate cuts ties with internet personality over protest comments. An Omaha mayoral candidate has cut ties with popular internet personality who publicly backed his campaign. The video surfaced with the man supporting violence against some protesters during summer demonstrations over police brutality. Mark Gudgel, an Omaha North man, recently just came to another second Omaha native who has a significant following on sites like YouTube and Twitch, online platform. Blah, 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 32, a Creighton Prep graduate who now lives in California, had supported Gudgel's bid for mayor by sending his own canvassers and volunteers to Omaha. The relationship began to draw criticism last month over an, expl an expletive laden clip from one of Bonnell's live streams from the summer, in which Bonnell said the rioting needs to stop if it means like. Blah, 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 it says in the clip. Oh, wow, he didn't add in uh, brackets Black Lives Matter. That's nice. Gudgel condemned the statement last week and said, advertised with Bunnell. Gudgel's been advocating for racial equality and police services. Bunnell's time to violence and crime and everything I believe. Uh, the next time, I'm just trying to judge person, one of the worst ones. Uh, uh, uh. Using emerging internet platforms to new younger audience, becoming increasingly popular among politicians of all stripes. Local candidates frequently hold Zoom forums. Uh, AOC, a New York Democrat, often hops on Twitch to play video games while discussing politics or encouraging people to vote. Gudgel was interviewed by Bunnell on Twitch earlier this year and has participated in other online. Uh, Bunnell's known destiny online has more than 980,000 followers between YouTube and Twitch. Founded a group, supported the recent Georgia Senate runoff campaign to Raphael Warnock and John Oss through the funding and training of volunteers. Earlier this year, he and his supporters turned their efforts into helping Gudgel. Interview of Bonnell estimated that he spent $50,000 supporting Gudgel. These costs included Airbnb and hotel stays for Bonnell's workers and volunteers and food for cameras, as he said. He's live streamed tens of thousands of hours by now, he said, and it wouldn't be difficult to take small clips out of context. Bonnell said he stands by the idea that people should be able to defend their businesses during protests. Communities of color, he said, have been harmed in the past by such physical destruction. But Bonnell said that at times his statements could be inflammatory. Obviously, I don't really want people getting killed while protesting, he said. Wow, cute. Bonnell's workers and volunteers were not campaign staff members and did not receive compensation or take direction from the campaign, Gudgel said. He said his campaign is composed entirely volunteers with the exception of his campaign manager. It really has been a grassroots movement. It's sounded as getting painted as that. Gudgel said he first wanted to reach out to students and join the partnership. Maybe a learning moment for Gudgel, a political newcomer. He said that he will be a little more cautious in the future. Omaha's primary election is April 6th, the two. Oh, well, damn. This is the uh, paper we were trying to get an interview with initially. I think this is the largest paper in Omaha, right? The Omaha World Herald probably is? I think so. Charlie Hebdo with a sweatstony cover for the magazine. Mm -hmm. 
French magazine Charlie Hebdo mocks George Floyd's murder and Megan's racism concerns. The cover reads why Megan left Buckingham Palace because I couldn't breathe. <laughs> Holy shit! That's a... That's definitely a comic. French gamer moment. She did say I couldn't breathe, right? Hold on, let me rest real quick, one sec. But hang on, hang on, before we move on though, I, this, this should normally be the duty of the friends or boyfriends of the women who are going to these bars and clubs, right? If you're worried about the safety of the women that you're with, you would walk them home and then, you know, being a chivalrous gentleman. Once everyone's uh, mining that skills. was Yeah, but we don't live in Saudi Arabia. Hi, women are free no, to go that... out on their own. Uh. You should debate Sam Hyde, who's unironically becoming a coach Red Pill clone. I think Sam Hyde is unironically like a fucking Nazi. Holy fuck, dude. When he, um, a few years ago when he got kicked off Adult Swim and then that combo leaked between him and that person on the phone and he was talking about how like the Jews were controlling like the, uh, the Adult Swim media and shit. Oh my God. He donated to the Daily Stormer, yeah. It makes, it, it sucks too, cause it like, it's really changes the way I view a lot of his skits now. <laughs> Because before they were like, God damn, this is some funny, edgy shit. But now it's like, oh no, wait. I don't think this was him being edgy. I think he's just really racist. <laughs> like, oh no. Where's the one with the black guy, like, pushing the boulder up the... Like, oh man, I don't know, dude. Yikes. Jesus, I got a lot of shit. Whoops, I need to pick that up. Or, throw that out. Okay, inventory upgrade again, yes. Boom, boom. Very nice. Okay, pistol, a small caliber. Okay, you want me to build this. Should I just build this instead of the... Ooh. Useless after firing one shot. A small caliber semi-auto pistol. All right, I don't think I have that much. Oh, I haven't technically been to the wolf's camp yet. I think I don't think I killed all the dogs in the one camp either. So I'm gonna go east, southeast, and then... This is the Sam Hyde's Get Destiny mansion, who cares? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How you doing there, Skeeter? Listen up and listen good. Since the beginning of recorded history, the white man's been coming up with technologies, cultures, civilizations worth keeping, worth saving, worth giving a damn about. Thank you, white man, for inventing the computer, the microwave, medicine, electricity, sanitation, theory of evolution, the radio, the pencil, Western law, cotton candy, freedom of speech, the sewing machine, discovery of DNA, the atom, discovery of the cell, the camera. Priceless, and we was king. This work hangs. Thank you, white people. Thank you for creating a society where people don't shit in the street or beat their kids all day. And thank you for letting us use your pristine, clean emergency rooms. And thank you for all the free money. Oh, and by the way, did you know I'm one eighth Hopi Indian? I don't give a fuck about that. Oh. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. Yuhu. Hi, hi. Um, thanks for giving women the vote. <laughs> What happened to your 
boulder, Goy. I don't know. I wasn't looking. Next thing I knew, boulder's gone. I guess I'm a stupid Goy. <laughs> You're white. Mm -hmm. I, like, I thought this was just, like, some crazy, edgy, hey. stupid, funny, like, satire shit, but I'm pretty sure it's just, <laughs> this is just what he actually believes. Fuck, holy shit. Watching a lot of these skits in retrospect is like, god damn, what the fuck? Jesus. All right, we looted all this over here, right? What is, um, what's the name of the thing? Um, that's like a quote where it's like, really good satire eventually becomes indistinguishable from the weird, the, um, from the real thing or from whatever it satirizes. It's Hold a on. computer. I'm, I'm getting a coffee. You can watch, okay? So you can know what I'm doing. Ooh. Dan, why are you camming up? Coffee. Oh my god. Oh, there's a big octopus. Well, Please. it's a Jewish thing, yeah. It's a squid. It's a Jewish thing? Mm-hmm. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, neither did Dan until some fucking Nazi trolled him into drying it on his back wall. <laughs> oh. He has a, a monkey, or is that a cat with a, a helmet on? It's a cat. It's his okay. persona, actually. It's supposed to represent oh. him when he's like in the, I don't know what they call it, their like set or setting or environment or something. He's got like mm -hmm. a special word for it. Oh, nice. Do you know his like, um, his process and in getting into his persona? I, I, he, Alfred has shown me once. So, oh God, if somebody has the clip of it. So upstairs, he has a second floor of this, which is where he lives in his like fur palace or something. I don't know what he calls it, but it's like, it's really weird. It's really gross. Um, and he, yeah. okay, this is like, I feel kind of bad sharing this, okay? It's kind of gross. But Dan just, <laughs> Dan would just dump kitty litter all over the floor upstairs. And he would just oh. do this over and over and over again. And the whole upstairs, like his little kitty litter fur palace. And it was just the grossest thing in the world. And he actually accumulated so much fucking kitty litter upstairs. If somebody has a clip, his fucking roof collapsed one day. <laughs> because he had so much, does anybody have the gif of Dan's kitty litter roof coming in? Anybody? Actually true? Yeah, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it sounds like I'm fucking with you a lot, but I'm not really fucking with you here. Where okay. is the, somebody find the, somebody give me the, the gif. Hold on. Can you show the Discord? Oh yeah. Wait, can I show the Discord? Here, Wait, I'm sending I'm you a message. Cool. Okay, thank you. Oh no, 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 wait, somebody gave me a stupid meme. Hold on, you're banned for 1,024 hours. I just want the actual clip of his roof collapsing. Sorry, one second. Oh, it's okay, take your time. Is that a, what is that big black um, box uh, next to the kitchenette? Uh, hold on, I'll take a second. Here, that one is his roof collapsing because of all the okay. kitty litter he had upstairs. I'm sorry, what's happening in here? Hold on. I told her about the what what you're doing upstairs. Upstairs? Oh, there it is. Wow. Yeah, holy shit, right? Mm. I remember when that happened. That was fucking crazy. I was just sitting there. Couldn't believe it. Minding my own business? Fucking crazy. I told you you mm -hmm. needed to reinforce that floor with everything that was going on up there, remember? What are you talking about? Because of all the... You, the roof wasn't going to hold everything. Well, yeah, no shit. That's why it fucking fell down. Hold yeah, hold. I know. I'm just saying that I'm surprised that you were that you didn't realize what was happening. How could I fucking realize it? Okay, it just happened all at once. What do you think? I had a fucking sign. Well, but I mean, it was like happened? it was a gradual buildup over time, right? Yeah, obviously, no shit. It does happen all at fucking once. Well, I don't know if I'd say no shit. I mean, I think that's part of the problem, Dan. What are you talking about? I'm just saying that this was something that you should have seen coming. How? Tell me how I could ever see it fucking coming. Well, tell it's me the how. first what, am I, time I'm fucking psychic. <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't obviously it wasn't made for that, Dan. <laughs> yeah, no shit. It's not made to be fucking wet. No kidding. All right, it's a fucking ceiling, not a fucking bucket. Well, maybe. Okay? <laughs> I don't know why you were using it like that then. Like, jeez. Using it like what? I'm not. I wasn't doing anything. There was a leak. It's not my fault. I didn't know. <laughs> I 
I don't. I feel like you're fucking with me. Like, I'm sorry. When you have a leak in in, in your roof, you know about it instantly. Well, that's why they normally put a box underneath it, Dan. What the fuck are you talking about? So that it a doesn't fucking leak what? through. No, yeah, usually you... cats no. use boxes. Wait, what? Cat. Yeah, usually... What are you talking about, cats? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did Steven tell you? This is... Okay, let me be clear. Above me, right here, this Dan, is It's my way roof. too late for that, Dan! This is my roof, okay? There if there was a leak, the rain, okay, seeped in, okay? Over time, I didn't notice until one day, minding my own business, the fucking roof collapsed. The rain? Yes, the rain. <laughs> or the urine. No, not the urine. There. Do you see a way to get to a second story in here? There is no way, no. I mean, let me inspect your house. How am I gonna, there's nothing to see. Do you hear him? Ow, ow. Look, look there's nothing. What is happening? Black. <laughs> Guess who's the slowpoke over the board? Yeah. Your okay, did I? Did we watch the Code Geass on stream thing? Did we watch this? I don't remember if I watched this on stream or off stream. If you're ever going to include, like, other games or whatever as part of your anime or your show, just, like, don't, just, like, why not just, well, you linked it off stream? Why not consult an expert or something so that you could have, like, something authentic? It would probably cost you, like, 50 bucks, okay? God, this is so cringe. Well, I didn't even remember this shit. Why would you do this? Oh, I didn't expect you to turn the tables on me so quickly. It's your king. If the king doesn't lead, how can he expect his subordinates to follow? Sure. Impressive strategy. That's In fine. Fact, okay. But... I'll do the same. <gasps> you would do well not to underestimate the white king, my friend. You wouldn't. Checkmate. But that means if Zero moves his king forward, then he'll capture Prince Schneisel's king. Why? Oh, that's too big of a joke. Why would you do this? this? There's like so many other I'm ways you can do this. Me a victory. If I accept this invitation, I'll be giving in to his intent. I can't allow this. This humiliation. I like how there's like a pawn sitting right next to you. Just don't do this, okay? Every, people always do this. They do it with like, um. <clears throat> Or maybe you have to do this for normal audiences. Why not like find, why not like make an actual exciting poker hand? Anytime you see poker in the movies, the quote unquote excitement basically comes from, um, the excitement literally just comes from somebody having an unbelievable high hand against somebody else having an unbelievable high hand. Like it's all just bad beats. That's what every, every movie poker hand is just a bad beat. It'll be like some guy is like, I have, quads and then the other guy's like oh well i have a straight flush and you're like oh okay and it's like it's so cringe it's sometimes a bluff sometimes but like very 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 rarely it's always like this shit so like I, if you watch this it's like Wait, I don't remember if this is the end or not. A full house to Monsieur Le Chiffre. Deuce is full of nine. Oh, no, this was when the other, when the one guy wins. But it's always like full house over full house. Oh. Or I think when James Bond wins, he, he has like a straight flush against like a, like a nut full house almost. Like, it's so dumb. I don't know. Like, there's like so many more ways you can make it exciting. Why? Why? The Queen's Gambit, they did a really good job. They had an actual chess game. Also in the first Harry Potter movie, there's a really cool puzzle that they had a GM set up for them. Yeah, like why not do something like that? Or even like, I feel like, the thing is too, is like chess has so many interesting personalities and shit. Like using origin references, the upstream version of a branch, for example, what you and everyone see on GitHub. Local branches are snapshots of that branch at different times upon which you can make changes. Make shorter commits and push your changes often, it helps. Wow. 
It feels like chess is so rich with like different players and personalities and like history too, that it feels like you, you could even get like a, a nice Easter egg or you can get, um, you can get like an interesting allegory by picking a certain professional game. So if you have like a character that's supposed to be like very arrogant or something, then you pick like an arrogant chess player and you find like the master championship finale of something and then you copy those moves. And then like it works really well as a metaphor too or something. I, I don't know, like it's so, I don't know. Ugh, there's potential there. Don't, just don't be cringe. Is that too much to ask? Okay, sorry. <laughs> what is this stupid fucking... Oops, it appears your hippo is not as famished as you claimed, Mr. Bond. I remember I got in such a huge fight with a guy, Sam. Samuel, I remember him. I think we were in sixth, no, we were in fifth grade. And um, I think it was the same year that some dumb Godzilla movie came out. We went to play, we were playing chess in the back because we were on like a free period, but we were like still in grade school. So we have to sit in the classroom or whatever. And we played chess and it, and it got to the point where like he clearly, he didn't know like what all the pieces did or something dumb. So obviously I get to a point to where like I've almost checkmated him, but he's like, no, I can't lose now. Like after I had him checkmate, I was like, well, you, of course you're gonna lose, you're, you're mated. And he's like, no, you can't capture the king. You're not allowed to do that in chess. You can't take my king. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, you can't take my king. And I'm like, wait, well, how the fuck is the game ever supposed to end? He's like, well, it doesn't matter. Like you can't take, you can't take my king. And then we argued until the teacher came over. She made both of us stop playing chess. I get salty. Fuck, fuck you, Sam. You know who you are. The only thing I'll say is that with poker, it's a bit more difficult to draw suspense or engagement without simply showing a really obvious, insanely unlikely bad beat. I'll see what we'll do this with chess, but it's possible. Poker moves are always... Going. But that's not even true, because these are all like animes anyway. American movies borrow a lot. Well, I'm not gonna say they borrow from anime. But like, American movies do the anime thing, where you have like two people facing off, and there will be like a hot girl or some wise old person watching from the side, and he'll be like, oh no, like... If Jeffrey, uh, if Jeffrey doesn't go all in here, he's not gonna have enough chips to call blood. Like, they, there's always people on the sidelines like explaining everything anyways. Like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed.